Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Paweł. And today I will be uh, talking about Flare. Okay, we got already some statistics. We know how many people are doing uh, Flutter commercially. And how many of you do Flutter whatever? Perfect. Keep the hands up if you uh, heard about Flare. And keep the hands up if you used Flare. Perfect, we have one specialist. I do want to co-author? Um, okay, so basically, what is Flare? So this is a really good sum up from actually their site. I didn't want to come up with something new because they knew whatever they already were doing. And you can already read it. But what is it? Is it a library? Is it a framework? It's more like a platform because they provide both tools to create the animations and the framework to run it. And as you can see, it's a quite a big idea what it is. But the most important thing about this is vector because uh, two dimensions have uh, two frameworks. One is Flare and the other is Nima. So if you go into Nima web page, it looks exactly like Flare, the same copy paste, and it took me something like 15 minutes to figure out one word, vector. So Flare is for vector graphics and Nima is for raster graphics. And actually Flare is much more updated and probably more used for just general applications in mobile software. And Nima is mostly for games. So, when was actually Flare introduced? It was almost exactly one year ago, on 4th of December, at uh, Flutter Live, when actually Flutter went live with 1.0, and there was uh, this one guy coming up on, onto the stage and saying, oh, we want to do some nice framework, and what if I can clone myself? And then, his twin brother stepped into the uh, scene. Everybody was laughing, but for me it's, it's embarrassing because I also have a twin brother who works at the same basically stack. But at that point, they introduced Philip. Actually, Philip is a real person. Uh, his name is Philip Hraczke. He is a flatter, not GDE, but um, flatter, how do you call him? Evangelist, yes. And on this animation, uh, he was late and um, basically lost. He was trying to get to the uh, flatter life, but he wasn't able to find his location. And it's really cute animation. Actually, he's way taller in real. He, he was like that, and oh my god, your animation is way more, uh, I don't know, not that intimidating. Um, but for example, this application because as you can imagine, this is a desktop application running already Flare, uh, would require plenty of effort if you didn't have any framework to do something like that. On Android, you have what framework or what animation framework? Any? Lottie, yes. Um, yeah, I have love-hate relationship with Lottie, which I don't have with uh, Flare. But in order to get Philip on the stage on your, in your application, you need to do plenty of things. So this is what you need to do. There is a already provided the class Flare Actor, which accepts an asset, path, and the animation. So basically, uh, fl uh, Flare animations uh, are just in one single file, but there are more animations in that file uh, than just one. It can be zero animation, it can be much more and you can switch between them. So that's the idea about, of the animation property. And what is exactly the FLR uh, file? It's basically something like that. It's a semi-binary format, proprietary format, uh, designed by the guys at uh, Two Dimensions. Why? semi-binary because there are still some things that they put there that is just plain text. I think that in the future they might be able to optimize it. And what's the benefit over Lottie? Oh, 
Lottie, you need to provide assets in basically JSON format. So you create an animation, or you create a graphics and then animate it within one file with JSON inside. It's so, so uh, wasteful. That's why I much more prefer this. Who, who could even think of animating something in JSON? So this is really, really simple uh, idea, how you can implement uh, Flare in your application. But before we continue, I need to confess something. Um, I'm a developer. I'm not a designer. Uh, during my primary school, I was horrible at these plastics uh, classes and exams. And my first UI design as a professional uh, programmer was horrible. Really, it was horrendous. And then having said that, also, I need to mention that this presentation might be a bit scary. So for timid people or skittish people, okay, you cannot leave anymore, but uh, hold to your seats. Ooh. What is this? Come on. Up, up. Buka, perfect. Actually, I uh, had the presentation in UK and Uruguay. In UK, one person knew. And in Uruguay, nobody knew Moomins. They missed out on lots of things when they were children. So um, as you know, Buka is really scary. That's the scary part of the presentation. Uh, maybe it's a bit over-exaggerated, because Buka in the Moomins uh, never was moving her face like that. Uh, who doesn't know Buka, Groke, or Mirke in Finnish? Samir, you know it. Ugh, why don't you put your hand? So um, why did I des uh, decide to go with this as my first, let's say, presentation? Because it's a purple blob. It's quite easy to create. It just took me a few hours in their tool. And also with help of Wikipedia image, and I just needed to also uh, change the opacity of all my windows for using the image of Wikipedia as my carbon copy template. So it was still uh, difficult for me. And the tool, I will mention it later, it crashed several times. So overall, it took me much more than coding the whole presentation. So what can we see here? It's just basically two um, uh, easy animations. One is the face, and the other is the head. And then, to, of course, to the head, there is the uh, eyes and the nose attached. But, so uh, we can play, try to, oh, I need to, my two hands, interact with it. No, wait. When you rub it on the belly, eventually it will uh, start smiling. You say that's bullshit. No, 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 in the moment, never, it's blasphemy. It never smiled. But in moments, it was basically just walking not in some mist, not doing anything harmful, but still uh, it scared the hell out of us. I don't know, 20 years ago, the children didn't need uh, horror movies to be scared. They needed this. So never ever any mumin tried to pet her on the belly. And I, this is my idea. If she was pet, she would be happy and looking exactly like that. So uh, how was it done? Um, Flare has this online tool, which is similar to Photoshop. Um, when, I don't know, six months ago or even longer, I was creating this presentation, it was horrible. It was crashing all the time. That's why it took me so much time. Uh, now it's really nice, and you can even import virtual, uh, SVGs as a base and then animate them, which is a huge improvement. Uh, but what's the whole idea? So the edges of the... Um, blob are just points and some Bezier curves connected together. But one thing is here important, so-called bones. This is one of the uh, ideas that they had. I think they reused it from somewhere. It's basically some uh, nodes connected with some, po uh, with some lines to other nodes supporting the other structures. And then you don't need to move every single point of the uh, uh, Groke or Buka. 
uh, you just move the bones, which is similar like normal bones, except that there are two bones on the right side. Because those bones are used to move the body, these bones were used to move the face, which um, doesn't usually happen in real. Um, so this is how you do it. Then you switch into the animation uh, uh, page, and then you just animate over time. It's simple. You name the animation. Either I named uh, one is smiling, the other is uh, scaring. And actually, you can do smooth transition bet uh, between them. How does it work under the hood? I won't show the code, because there is plenty. Um, they did quite a lot of good job while designing uh, the entire framework because uh, what is at the bottom, there is just a render object. Uh, I know that some people don't know from here. It's basically drawing things on the canvas. It's, they don't use just a widget because widget is this declarative way of creating Flutter application, but underneath there needs to be something that is uh, more imperative and do actually drawing Layouting is somewhere in the middle. Um, so basically, they animate those things when you start in this render object or over time. And they give you some, you some additional hooks that you can hook into and then control the animations, which is the controller part that the uh, Philip animation before didn't have. Here, it has, and it's a bit more complex. But, uh, before you fire your designers and hire me instead, let's go to um, other horrible animal. As you can see, another vicious uh, animal, it's a bear, I think, made by two dimensions. A bit, uh, um, let's say, improved by me because it had some quirks. And what does it do? It's uh, the, the Cerberus, the dog protecting your Facebook login. So let's try uh, logging in. And as good protector, it looks what you are actually writing. Yeah, okay, let's, this is my real uh, email address, and let's try to log in. And one thing about the bear, whose name is Teddy, it is uh, GDPR compliant. So, now, um, let's try to uh, insert some passwords. Uh, try going in. No, something doesn't work. No. Okay, let's show the password. Okay, this is not my password. So when I try to log in, it uh, is panicking, let's say. So um, let's think what other password can be there be. Oh, try verse. Yes, it's the password. Uh, actually, I recommend you not to use this pattern in your application. It is convenient, but decreases a bit security. And now the question how it is uh, different than Philip animation, which was the easiest, Grok animation, which was a bit harder because you needed to actually interpolate between those two uh, scaring and smiling animations because then it uh, smoothly transitions, it didn't have a jump. Here, uh, we have similar idea, like uh, switching between the animations. It actually is not that well controlled, so it, there is small jump, there is not interpolation, but what is important that it actually uh, tries, I, I pressed the incorrect button. It tries to uh, follow the caret, the cursor. And how is it done? Actually, this is a bit harder because you do have the hooks, but uh, you cannot really amend the animation in a really nice way. So basically, uh, what we did in the, when we created the animation, we gave it a vector to look at some kind of uh, point in space, in uh, flare space. And in order to change it, we got this callback each and every frame or each and every time it wants to render, and then we need to provide um, uh, Teddy the position that it should look at. So we actually need to fetch out the render object of this, 
and fetch out the position of the cursor and then pass it back to him. It requires quite a lot of mathematical knowledge, maybe not quite a lot, but some, and a designer wouldn't be able to do it unless they are also a, a developer. So you can control animations really nicely, but still you need um, plenty of knowledge. So you can make your own uh, animations like I do, did. I don't recommend it. You can ask your designer if he has time, which he hasn't. Or you can go to uh, explore section of uh, two dimensions. Basically, there, there's a, it's, I wouldn't call it a shop. It's basically a repository of open sourced um, NEMA and Flare items that you can either look and fork when somebody um, marked it as forking, or you can just look how it was made. And their business model is uh, quite simple and interesting. I hope they will succeed. That if you uh, want to, if you allow others to fork it or view it, you can put it there. You can design it, put it there, and you can use it. But if you want to hide it from the rest of the society, you need to pay them. And actually, it's quite uh, not that cheap. It's not that cheap, but it's, for a company, of course, it's not expensive. Um, yeah. Let's see where they go with that. And uh, as you can see, Philip is there, some kind of random error, some kind of random uh, images that people wanted to play with. So the repository of reusable items is not that huge. Uh, you can maybe grab a few and then assemble without that much knowledge your own, uh, but on itself it's not that tremendously useful yet. Maybe more items will be added soon. And now let's discuss a bit uh, uh, Flare. So, the good things about Flare, it's amazing. Basically, we already know that the animations, the items, the Flare actors are widgets. And we know that everything in Flutter is a widget, which is lie because 33% of things are widgets. But anyhow, in a text field, every, even you can put, instead of uh, really text, you can uh, mix it with other widgets. And if you can mix with animations, then you can uh, put flare animations anywhere you want. As big as you want, because of course it's a, a vector graphic, so you can do pretty much everything with it. And I hope that you saw one minus that I will discuss later, uh, that the animations loaded a bit later than uh, the text itself. What other thing, and it is a huge thing, is important for Flare? It's pure Flutter. So, uh, how, many, uh, do, how many of you do know the difference between Flutter package and Flutter plugin? Okay, perfect. Uh, so, Flutter package is just Dart code. Basically, you can either use it in Dart, plain Dart, which is just Dart package, or you can use it in uh, Flutter, which is either Dart package or Flutter package. There is no native code. You can use it everywhere. And the other is plugin. So uh, plugin plugs in into native uh, OS. So camera, Flutter, would be a plugin because it needs to deep dive to get the functionality of camera. And lots of things are like that. But the problem with them is that you need to then, if you switch the platforms, you need to either have a plugin that supports both platforms or you need to implement it yourself. And when Fuchsia is released, half of your application won't work because the native part is not yet there. And um, Flare is not the case. Flare has actually two packages. One is uh, Flare Dart and the other is Flare um, uh, Flutter, which provides some widgets, etc., etc., some specific things uh, that uh, Flutter has and Dart doesn't. Why is it really important? Actually, today, uh, in the morning in the, on the train, I found out that uh, this setup doesn't support Linux. And I have just Linux. I have my Linux laptop with me. And then what the fuck should I do? Thank God Dominic said, okay, I can run it for you. And we could recompile it for uh, macOS. That I never did. I was really ho uh, hoping that everything will uh, go uh, right. And 99% did. 
and it saves my ass today. But uh, also, it will work eventually on web. Actually, it should already work on web. How performant it is, it's a different story. And when Fuchsia is released, you can use it already. Um, now, the bad. Um, advanced API is not yet stable. So I was talking about controlling uh, both Teddy and Groke, and it requires some mathematical knowledge, it requires playing with vectors, matrices, and also it got broken, I don't know, Three months ago, when uh, I was also preparing part of this presentation for something, the Teddy looked just blindly in one space, like he didn't care. He, no, fuck you, I'm out of it. And uh, notice that they removed one callback uh, to the application to uh, calculate the gaze. I reported it and uh, quite well detailed, and the guys were really responsive. They immediately, after four days, fixed it which is uh, really nice. And actually, uh, I believe they are now hiring more people because they got some more resources. So if you are in Flutter study group in the job section and you are interested in creating this framework, please write them. They are somewhere in Silicon Valley or somewhere near. But it's yet not stable, and you really require some additional knowledge. Uh, this is an understatement. Um, if you go into Flutter code, dot code, Flutter code, I don't, uh, I don't care, everything is really well doc documented perf with perfect examples. You can even learn English from there. It's so well written. Um, it's not the case for a Flare code or NEMA code. Uh, it's like normal human beings wrote it, not like Flutter. And it's sometimes hard to figure out what's actually what. You need to really dig into this. Uh, but actually, they have really good blog. They explain a lot of concepts from the tool itself, from the framework, and explain how to deal with uh, things. So documentation in the code is a bit crappy, but outside, they really uh, are top-notch. Is there anything? No, no other bad things. And the, the ugly. Um, before I had my brother's picture there and some additional uh, minuses of flair, but as for performance wise, they already uh, removed the problems, the major problems. They added some caching that you can use. Um, they removed crashes. So now it's pretty stable. We are using it a bit in our uh, production environment. And uh, it's really good because they are learning on other, of, uh, other platforms. Because as I mentioned, they have uh, Flare uh, for Dart and Flutter, but they have also for web in JavaScript, uh, I think in Unity. And if you go to their repositories, basically they have copy-paste of the code. So uh, obviously there are different languages, but the concepts and the code, the classes even are really similar. That's why even the documentation sometimes, or the code, looks not that dartish. The brackets are not in the correct places because they first wrote it in uh, JavaScript. But they are learning. And actually, I really enjoy the whole framework. So this is the uh, QR code for the presentation. We will be posting it uh, somewhere, I hope. If you want to play with your camera, Please go, uh, give it a go. Uh, and of course, it's on GitHub. You can play around with other things. And uh, before the questions, um, I wanted to thank the organizers for getting us here. It's really nice uh, that what you are doing here with Flutter for Poland. And I really appreciate it. And second thing is that you don't need to do your all animations with Flare because for example, you can see this small, oh, it's just waving, this small uh, 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 wave animation. It's done easily in normal uh, Flutter. It's actually easier to do it than if you are a programmer than in Flare. And Flare animations are, should be usually used as the delighters. They shouldn't be used as like hero image, 
going from one place to the other. They should be something to tickle the user, to make him occupied when he is looking at the spinner. We have uh, in previous, in, uh, in one application, we had a loader done with Flare and actually the people were saying, why is it so fast? I want the loader a bit slower. I want to see the loader because it's really nice uh, wiggling elephant in something different. So we needed even to slow down uh, future delayed on purpose to make it more visible. Okay, questions? <laughs>